I can't look back It's too late now My days are hours And I don't know how But I believe the great Is still yet to come I won't stop fighting man until I'm done. So welcome to the latest edition of The Breakfast Ball. I'm your host, Bob Cardia, and to my left, your right, the dashing Richie Stoltz, our number one assistant and all-around good guy. So uh, today is mm -hmm. called Get Off the Couch, which um, is actually a story near and dear to my heart, actually. I, um, I got another one of my dad's stories, which I like to tell. Uh, but growing up, um, Gary Player um, was the uh, the model for for um, practice and whatnot for me. And um, well, I was like, you guys should know who Gary Player is, by the way. And the story that uh, that I, I tell probably every semester now for the past year and a half, two years, is uh, our Jack Nicholas story. So, if you don't know who Jack Nicholas is, you surely don't know who Gary Player is. But um, I guess about a year and a half ago, maybe two mm -hmm. years. I don't know. I said to a group of twenty, you know, eight to twelve year olds, um, you know, does anybody know who Jack Nicholas is? Expecting for everyone to say, yeah. And Richie, how many of the kids knew who Jack Nicholas was? None of them. None. None of them. Zero. Not a. After a couple of minutes, actually a couple of seconds, one kid raised his hand and said, "Coach, coach." He's like, "Wasn't that the guy in The Shining?" So okay, well. You know, what's more alarming, that you had a class of kids that doesn't know who Jack Nicholas is, or you've had an eight-year-old who's seen The Shining. Be nice to that kid, for sure. But anyway, <laughs> so Gary Player, uh, one of the, the fitness gurus, probably the, the first fitness guru in golf, and one of the mentally toughest people that's ever played the game. Um, he's a small guy, so they used to say, oh, man, he's getting lucky, he's getting lucky. And they asked him about that one day, and he said, they, they tell me I'm lucky. He said, but the funny thing is, the harder I work, the luckier I seem to get, which um, is is um, so true. <laughs> you know, work hard, and 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 if you work hard properly, you will will get better. Um, so the story I'm going to tell is, is about my father. So I love telling dad stories. So for those of you who are in our demographic and Mary back there, who's also in, in, in our demographic, uh, when we used to come home from school, there was the after school special with uh, you know. Today I'm still just a bill and uh, and uh, conjunction junction for those people who know what I'm talking about. But uh, you know the John Travolta movie, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, <laughs> which is crazy. But I I, uh, I used to watch those when I got home from school. So I'd make myself my, my green pea soup and my, my ham sandwich, and I'd sit and I'd dunk my. I, Mary's making faces back there because she said oh, that sounds stuff. awful. It does sound awful, but it was good, right? So I'm sitting there and drinking my soup, watching my after school special, and my dad walks in. And he's like, son, he's like, why aren't you out practicing? Now, little known fact about my dad, our, our high school back in, in, in the 80s um, was thinking about canceling the golf program. And my dad, who, who was actually the coach at Rutgers uh, prior to me, um, he, he went in and spoke to the school board. And he actually spoke to the local private golf course that, um, that, we, uh, that we were using. Or we're going to use actually because the golf course that we'd used in my freshman through junior years got bulldozed for a a, a, um, a building project. Laurel Oak it was called. It got, it got bulldozed. So my dad went in and he talked to all the parties concerned and um, turns out almost every kid on the golf team was a member of the private golf course. I think there was two or three of the top ten that weren't and I was the only starter that was not a member of the golf course. So I'm sitting on the couch, I'm like, Dad, I'm like, look, all the kids that are members, you know, they have a driving range. People hit golf balls, they pick them up. I'm sorry, for them, right? They pick them up for them. Right? Yeah. So my dad's like, well, I bought you this brand new shag bag. And it was one of those old school, big leather shag bags. And it's like, what you do, son, is, is you hit them and then you go retrieve them. And like me being a 16-year-old smartass, I'm like, Dad, you, what, you want me to go to the schoolyard hit the golf balls, find them, pick them up, bring them back, and do it again. And he said, I did when I was a kid. And I took that to be like, oh, yeah, I walked both ways uphill in the snow every day. And I said, Dad, there's no way you hit all these golf balls, picked them up, and brought them back every day. 
And he looked at me and he said, son, that's really not very difficult when they're all about 10 feet apart. <sighs> okay, got it, right? The more I practice, the luckier I get. So I picked up that shag bag and I started practicing. And uh, Richie knows this and Mary knows this. Like I, I'm big into to, to working out. I work out quite a bit. I've charted every workout I've done since 1991. Right, and we're in 2023. So actually this year I'm gonna pace to set a personal uh, high in, in my workout programs. But so I decided uh, back then, which was, you know, I guess late eighties, mm -hmm. that I'm gonna do the same thing with my golf routine. Um, interesting, right? So when you work out, like Richie, I, Mary, we're all social people, we'll, you know, on weekends we'll go out and we'll, you know, enjoy ourselves. Um, Practicing for uh, perfection is different than working out. Like, if you only have 20 minutes to work out, you can do your reps faster, get a higher intensity, um, you know, stretch in different ways, and, and that works. Because I, I, I do believe showing up is better than not showing yeah. up. So whatever you can get in, you can get in. But uh, I was practicing my golf, and, and like, let's just say, you know, me and the boys were going out on a Friday night, and I'm like, I, I mismanaged my time and I only had 30 minutes left to practice golf. I'd grab the shag bag and run out to the, to the schoolyard and I'd, I'd hit 24 balls and I'd write down what I worked on and I'd, I'd leave. Um, but guess what? After a period of time, I wasn't getting any better. And that's, um, that's when I determined that, that um, charting golf practices doesn't work if you cannot do something. And I do this with some of my students. I call it a ATD, attention to detail. Um, practicing when you're looking to get to the higher level of greatness is not good enough. You need to pay attention and intention to what you're doing. Just hitting a golf ball for the sake of saying, I practice today, Dad, is not good enough. Um, so I started to do things differently. Rather than you know the guy, and you and I have a bunch of these students, the guy that comes to the driving range window large bucket and he has a driver and a five iron in his hand right all day right see and, way too often yes and right and, it, and it, we'll hit two large buckets inside an hour like that's not practicing that's that's rapid fire that's pulling like, whack yeah just pull you're right <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting any better and yeah well you know there there's definitely a reason for that so um that that moment with my dad uh motivated me yeah. motivated me to be a a what my dad would call a student of the game. Like, you know, it's not good enough to just practice. But it lit a fire underneath me in, in so many ways in my life that it was like one of those moments that like uh, defined motivation, but motivation in a, a uh, productive manner, not just to, to show up, but to do. So I guess my first question for the dashing Rishi Stoltz is, when was the first moment that you felt the most motivated? Tell me I can't do something. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you say I were to go play in a tournament and Coach Bob, for whatever reason, has no confidence in me to play in that tournament. Which wouldn't happen. No, huh? no confidence to win. <laughs> and he tells me that. Well, I'm going to look at Coach Bob and I'm going to go, watch this. I got this. And that's going to motivate me up until that tournament to go get it done. Now, anytime you tell me I can't do something... That's when I'm the most motivated. Which which I've found in all the years of coaching. Um, that is a, a, a trait uh, completely underestimated. Um, you know, Zach had it, um, Q had it, and you have it. And I'll, I'll, we'll talk more. I, I know you don't know who Zach is, but Zach is one of our players who made the finals of the USAM. And Q was one of our players who won the Tournament of Champions for the state of New Jersey. And beat me. And beat you, yes. In that tournament. Well, you sound bitter about that. That's no, not I came in second. <laughs> came in second. <laughs> Which I love the fact that tournament champions for a state of New Jersey, you know, my guys came in first and second. Just saying. Anyway. Um, yeah, it, 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 uh, that is a, a trait that people have that is completely underestimated. I, I call it, I think I've called it Tom Brady syndrome. Mm -hmm. When people tell you you're unathletic, you're not good enough, you can't do this, you're wasting your time, and you look at them and say, you know what, watch this. Right, because most people like in the movie Pretty Woman, like they, I remember that they, you know, you could be so much more, 
And, and I guess Julia Roberts says, well, the bad stuff is easier to believe. Yeah, damn right it is. Yeah. But people that have that gene like you have it are, are, are a rare commodity and should be appreciated. So question number two, and I, um, this, I've already answered this for myself. What part of your daily routine uh, would you be better without? Yeah, hitting the snooze. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are guilty of that one. Um, hitting the snooze. I don't do it every day, no. but I, I do do it relatively often. Typically speaking, I'm, you know, if I work pretty late, say I'm working on stuff till 12 o'clock at night, and I try and get up for the gym in the morning, mm -hmm. I might hit snooze a couple times. Yeah. And I notice when I wake up and I go, man, I just wasted another 30 minutes that I could have got stuff done later on. You know, it kind of hindered my time for the day. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. The people that are nearest and dearest to, to my life know that. Um, I I hate wasting time. Mm -hmm. I, I and like when I do it and 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 I I um, I'm conscious of it. It it bothers me. I um, we were talking uh, earlier uh, about this and how we ended up here and all that kind of stuff. But I I um, I don't like to waste time because time is one thing you can't save. So. I had my annual physical at the doctor, um, what day was it, Wednesday? I don't know. Yeah. Well, it was right after the meeting, right? Oh, yeah. Day. Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday, right? So, <laughs> and uh, I know my doctor, he's retiring, which it, it stinks. So, so it, it, if Dr. Hanley's watching this podcast, then thank you for, for all the years. But, um, you know, I went in there and I realized that he, he, he is more about the patient than he is about, let's say, the insurance company. <laughs> Love the guy. So um, I know he typically runs a few minutes behind when I'm in the waiting room. So what did what did I do? I, I brought a book. I I, uh, I brought a book with me, and I took that that 20 minutes or so while I was sitting in the, in, in the patient room to read five or six chapters of a book. Um, I felt personally that 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 it's more productive. So you know, time is the one thing you can't save. You can't save time. So. If you know you're going to have downtime, rather than watching TikTok, right? Yeah. Which, which uh, you know, I know most young people do. I, I take that time to try to maximize my time, and that's how we end up with podcasts. That's how we end up yeah. with the programs that we do. Is is you know, Crazy Coach Bob is always bouncing off the walls with something to do. You know, anyway. Yes. So can. this is good because I, I I think you and I differ on this, but I want to yeah. have a I want to have a lively debate on this one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> If beauty is in the eye of the beholder, isn't reality? See, I don't think so. Um, I think your reality is your reality. Now, your future could be in the eye of the beholder, but your reality, where you stand right now, I believe, is where you stand right now. Yeah, that the Bill Parcells, you are what your record says you are. Yeah. And, and you know, so this is a, a great lesson, I think, for everybody, really, it is... Um, you know, when we teach people, um, not everybody receives information in the same way. So my father had his doctorate in education. Uh, my my uh, mother was a school teacher. My ex-wife was a school teacher. I grew up in a house of, of school teachers. And, um, you know, sometimes like magazines would come or, you know, and, and I'd thumb through different um, things. And, and one was like, there's four different ways to learn, I think it was. And this is a long time ago. But basically, some people learn by, by better by reading something. Some people learn better by hearing an anecdotal story. Mm -hmm. Some people learn by putting themselves in a, in a better position, you know, kinesthetically, I guess. And it was going through all these different ways of learning. So at the end of each golf lesson that Richie and I teach, um, I guess the, the, the worst, by the way, the worst lesson I ever had of anything, because I took up guitar later in life, I had a guitar instructor that I was working with, right? And uh, it was a 30 minute lesson. And when I sat down, he flipped over the egg timer, right? And literally in 29 minutes and 59 seconds, when that last grain of uh, sand went through the egg timer, he stopped in mid sentence. Okay, see you next week. And I walked out. Did, the man didn't really care if I learned anything. He just did, fulfilled his 30 minutes. Whereas Richie and I, when we teach, I mean, we're like a doctor's office, basically, because <laughs> if someone does not understand that concept, we will spend an extra minute or two to make sure they do. Yep. But what else we do is we write down, we give the student um, you know, homework. We have a, a yep. specific homework, and it's old school, guys, but we have the triplicate copies. We keep one for ourselves, one the customer gets, and then one 
Mary gets to, to file through to make sure we're, we're staying whenever, on top of the Whenever board. she gets them from us. We ran. <laughs> but we're getting better, right, Mary? <laughs> a little bit. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> okay. We're getting a little better. We're trying. So uh, what I do and, and what I've done in the past is I, I actually used to keep different colored pens sometimes because I saw somewhere like purple, red, and orange, like people, that pops. So sometimes I'd circle stuff like that. And then I'd draw diagrams where I'd write stories. Like one of our, our favorite stories, and, and, you know, we say the most misunderstood word in golf is what? Swing. 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 Yeah, it's the one. So um, Richie and I, you know, we're going to do our boy band. We're going to, the monotones. <laughs> um, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Sometimes we'll put that on the bottom. Right? Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what we'll put on the bottom of the sheet. So I guess long story short, there's different ways for people to to learn and, and and it's our job to communicate that way so my way like when, I, when it says beauty is in the eye of the beholder isn't reality i i think it absolutely is like how uh, my belief is you know my reality is what i'm capable of doing not currently where i am now mm -hmm. so that's how the podcast yeah. right the, you know I, well we don't have a podcast we have no idea what we're doing um and we <laughs> We you still don't. see the bloopers. The blo right, the bloopers. So, <laughs> incidentally, the first five minutes of today's podcast, we realized that the microphone was not plugged in. So, uh, and that's our, our, our high tech. So, um, we. I we, enjoyed it. We, yeah, Mary enjoyed the first five minutes. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, the, my reality is is the Eric Thomas, uh, Eric Thomas example, mm -hmm. a guy who basically had nothing, and decided to do these podcasts, you know, every day, for I guess over a year. And, and, and to, to preach his beliefs and what he thought and the whole nine yards. If his reality was, I think he's from Detroit. Is that correct? I believe so. Yeah, I think but he splits I his be time wrong. between Detroit and um, and San Diego. I, I think his wife has MS. So that rather than being, because I guess there's a correlation between um, uh, weather, climate, and like MS stress. The sun gives her energy. Correct. I believe yeah. is what it is. Something along those lines. Right. Sun. Did I, I tell you I'm so bright? My mom calls me sun. <laughs> I had to throw this one bad joke. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so that, that that's he goes back and forth. But this guy mm -hmm. basically, you know, grew up in, in, in the projects and had nothing. And he had a vision of what his reality is. So that is how I'm living my life. Yeah. Now, Richie's motivation level is the, the Tom Brady syndrome, right? Yeah. 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 He likes to, you know, and when I coached at Rutgers, or well, I still coach at Rutgers, but... Rutgers at, at Camden. Uh, if you if you Google Camden, it, it it by the way Camden's gotten a ton better since I've been there. I mean it's 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 proved a lot. But um, at one point I can think 60 minutes did a special on it. You know 20 30 years ago that it was like you know the, the number one crime city in the country. So recruiting for golf in in, in that you know uh, in that setting is, is you have to sell a vision like you have to sell what you're all about as opposed to the reality of what the city is. So yeah. that's why I pursue things. But when I coached you and, and brought you aboard, yeah, I took the, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm not an Eagle fan, sorry folks, but I'm not, the uh, the Buddy Ryan, uh, Buddy Ryan mentality is it's like us against the world. Yeah. Right. And when you go that way, we had we had a shirt made actually, and, and my, um, my son, uh, who's very uh, cold and very artistic kid, he helped design it. But basically it said, um, um, what was the uh, un? What was the it was quote? underdog something? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. the year before I was there. Right, right, right. So, but basically, the, the T-shirt said that um, you know we were not respected. Yeah. Right, and and that was our battle cry for that team. Yeah. And you know, by the time you know 2019 rolled around, we beat the number one team in the country. Yeah. So, again, just, just different points of motivation, but. Um, you know, from your experience, right? I mean, you, you can't teach everybody the same way, correct? No, you cannot. No. Not, everyone learns differently. So it's, you have to find out how you're going to teach everybody. Yeah. You know, person to person. You got to find their hot spot. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I guess, today's overall thing is get off the couch. Okay. It, it's my father, God bless him where he is today, you know, uh, he, he instilled that in me like, you know, yeah, you can sit around all day and just say, you know, um, reality is what it is. I think reality is where I'm going. Well, mm -hmm. The vision, right? Set the bar high, go for that. So, 
With that said, we're not going to stop and, and, until we get to where we want to be, guys. That's what we want to do with this world. So uh, this is today's episode of The Breakfast Ball. Get off the couch. Yeah. Bob Cardia. Rich Stoltz. The Dashing. The Richie Dashing. Stoltz. The Dashing. Richie Stoltz. Yes. Uh, until next time, see you then. There's a bourbon ha-ha My bourbon ha-ha My, 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 my bourbon ha-ha Alcohol There's no great story ever started with I'll have a salad